here are some of the first things that you can do on Poco F7 after the initial configuration. So if you have just done the first setup, here's what you can do first before you move on. So the first thing that we're going to do is check notifications because you might see this notification finish setting up your device. You might want to use it, although it is not really necessary to do so. This option allows you to once again go through some of these options that you can see during the first configuration. So if you skipped something and you think that you could have enabled something or changed something, you can go through that in order to, um, to go through them again, pretty much. In case you don't have the notification, there is a high chance that you will also see the same thing in the settings below the search field. Now, in my case, I don't really have to go through that again, so there is no need for me to do so as I did everything that I wanted in the initial configuration. So the next thing that we we'll want to do is, of course, the update. So if there is a new update waiting for you, you will see this update button right next to About Phone, or you can go to About Phone in order to find the update option. So I'm just going to tap on Update, and of course, we're going to start downloading it. So press Download Update, and of course, we're going to wait for the update to be downloaded and then also installed. While the update is being downloaded, uh, what you can do is go back to the settings and over here we can scroll down in order to find the option that allows us to, of course, sign into our Google accounts. So we're going to go to additional settings and then over here, if you scroll down, we have uh, accounts and sync. Go to add account in order to, for example, sign into uh, a Google account if you didn't do that yet, or if you have multiple Google accounts that you wish to use on your phone, then of course you can do that over here. Just use Google and then you should be able to easily sign in. You might also want to create a Xiaomi account or sign into the Xiaomi account if you didn't do that yet. This one allows you to use, for example, the theme store uh, that we have on this phone, um, but that is of course only if you are actually planning on using some of the Xiaomi features that we have on this phone, some Xiaomi uh, apps. After that, what you can do is go to the Play Store. Let's press not now. There we go. And if you tap on your profile in the top right corner, you should be able to find Manage Apps and Device. And over here, we can find apps that can be updated because uh, most likely all these apps that we have on our phone are out of the date, so we want to update them. You can either press update all in order to start updating everything, or you can press update one by one in order to, um, in order to well, decide what should be updated first. You don't even have to go to the list over here. You can just press update all over here in order to do so. So this is what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to let the phone update everything. And besides that, if you open settings, we also have system apps updater, which can also be used in order to check if there is any updates. I'm going to update everything here as well. Here we can unfold the list in order to find everything uh, that is uh, also not included. So not only these two apps that you can perhaps see, but everything that is listed below here as well. All right. So after that, what we can do is disable ads that we have on our phone. But first, let me check if the update for the system is ready. It is still not done, so let me show you how we can disable ads. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to App Vault. Press Got It over here, tap on these three dots in the top right corner, open Manage Services, and we're going to disable these two options. You can also go to Manage Notifications that we had over there. So we, here we have Manage Notifications and we can disable notifications completely. By the way, as I'm going through these apps that I'm about to show you in order to turn off ads, uh, you can also remember about turning off notifications for them uh, because sometimes these apps can still send you some notifications that can be quite annoying. So uh, you can just turn off notifications completely for these apps. Next, we're going to go to Downloads over here, tap on these three dots and go to Settings and we need to disable Recommended Content. Let's go back over here. Now we're going to scroll down and we want to go to the MI browser. Now, of course, over here, you don't have to really use this browser, uh, but I assume that you do. If you have this uh, message or this welcome message, etc., you can disable personalized services and press agree and continue. But after that, what you can also do is 
uh, tap on this person icon in the bottom right corner, then open settings over here in the top right corner. And here we can scroll down to go to advanced in order to find show ads option. So we want to disable it. All right. After that, we're going to go back. Let's exit. And then we're going to go to MI video. Over here, what you can do is tap on the setting icon in the top right corner. We can go to popular today and we can turn it off, disable these notifications. Then we also have scan for new local videos. We can disable that as well. And I think that's all that we have. But if you don't really want to use this app, you can just withdraw from the content so that you won't be bothered with it. Next is music app over here. And in this case, what you can do is let's actually close all of this is go to the top left corner over here. We have these two um, slices icon and we can go to settings in order to disable permanent notifications. You can also go to advanced settings in order to disable these options over here, show ads, online recommendations and personalized recommendations. Then uh, the next app is security. Over here, tap on the setting icon in the top right corner, disable received recommendations, go to cleaner and do the same thing. You should be able to find recommendations here as well. So we want to turn it off. Let's go back. Next app is themes. So let's open themes, go to my account in the bottom right corner, open settings in the top right corner, disable these two options, show ads and personalized recommendations. And I think if I remember correctly, that's everything from apps that we can turn off. And I mentioned notifications. So we're going to also go to apps over here. And actually, no, not, we're not going to go to apps. We're going to go to notifications and status bar. Then over here, go to app notifications. And here we can see if anything is enabled that should not be really enabled. So for example, I'm going to disable my video and music. I don't need that. I'm going to also disable my browser unless you are actually using this browser so you can keep it on. But other than that, I don't think there is any reason to keep it on. And I can also disable themes. I don't think I need to have notifications enabled for that. And yeah, that should be all. All right. So after that, once we are done with ads, another thing that we can do is remove bloatware because unfortunately there is bloatware installed on this phone, some games and apps that are not really useful for us most of the time. So what you need to do is simply press and hold your finger and you should be able to find this trash, this trash icon. So you want to do that with every app that you know that you want to use. So for example, you can just, uh, just uninstall all these games that you have on this phone by default or some apps, of course, as well. Next, uh, we're going to also disable app suggestions. So uh, in this case, as you can see at the top of the app drawer, we have app suggestions. So we can tap on the setting icon and we can disable these app suggestions. We also have categories, which we can also disable if you don't want them. So after that, if we go back, as you can see, we don't have app suggestions and these categories at the top are also removed. This is of course, personal preference. Um, so uh, you can use it or not. It's up to you. Then we're going to go to, uh, to settings again. This time we're going to go to um, additional settings and we want to go. Uh, let me actually try to find it. We're going to go to gesture shortcuts and over here we have power off or reboot. So this is once again a personal preference. Uh, if you don't like to use or have the uh, digital assistant assigned to the power button, you can turn it off by choosing this option. So if you press and hold the power button now, then you should be able to find the power menu instead of the digital assistant. All right. So now let's go back to the main page of settings next is the wait i kind of lost it there we go home screen so we want to go to the home screen and here if you scroll down at the bottom we have system navigation so you can either choose to use buttons at the bottom of the screen or you can use gestures you can also learn gestures if you don't know how to use them of course we also have some customization options over here so you can go through them in order to uh, for example, like mirror buttons or something. So if you want to change the position of buttons, then you can do that over here. 
All right, and if we go back to home screen settings, at the bottom we also have arrange items in recents, which is all these background apps. So as you can see, this is the standard style for uh, background apps. In order to close them, we can move them left or right. It doesn't really matter which way in order to close them, of course. But we can switch it to horizontal style, so you can just swipe up in order to close the app instead. This is, of course, once again, personal preference. After that, we're going to go back to the settings. And in the settings, we're going to this time go to fingerprints, face data, and screen lock. So if you didn't set up your password yet for the phone, this is where you can set it up. You can choose the password type that you wish to use. And once you do that, you can also set up biometrics, the fingerprint unlock, or face recognition. Then we're going to go back and I'm going to go to the lock screen settings. In lock screen settings, you should be able to find wallpaper carousel. Now, I didn't actually turn it on, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to actually turn it on. And over here, you can disable wallpaper carousel, which is a feature that changes wallpapers in the lock screen. Every time you go to the lock screen, the wallpaper changes. If you are a fan of that, then of course you can leave it as it is. If you don't like this feature, if you wish to have just one wallpaper in the lock screen of your choice, then of course we can disable the wallpaper carousel. Just press turn off over here. And we can also disable update wallpapers using mobile data, even if you actually use this feature. Next, we're going to go to the battery settings. Let's see where we can find it. And the battery is over here below apps, all right? And over here we have a couple of things that we can go through, like charging options. Over here you can turn on the uh, fast charging if you wish to use it. If you go to battery protection, you should be able to also find um, the smart charging or battery protection option. Now, ideally you need to use, or maybe not need, but you are recommended to use at least smart charging option which allows the device to stop charging at 80% and learn charging patterns. So if you always charge your phone at the same time of the day, then after some time, the phone can pick this pattern up and um, then you should be able to let the phone start charging again from 80% to 100% when the phone knows that you are about to stop charging, that you are about to unplug the charger. But of course, once again, this is recommended only if you have some sort of pattern. Uh, if you don't have any pattern, you might consider using battery protection, which limits the battery charging to 80% and that's it. However, if you find both of these options inconvenient or if you don't have any pattern, then you can just use charge fully. Uh, but um, it is actually recommended to keep the, when charging the battery, it is recommended to keep it uh, up to 80% or so uh, because the battery lasts for a little bit longer if you do so. This is how batteries work uh, nowadays on recent smartphones. And we also have additional features which you can check out as well. However, I'm not sure if that's actually that uh, useful. And... We're going to also go to the privacy protection. Sorry, not privacy protection, my bad. I believe it is actually over here in fingerprints, face data, and screen lock. Let's actually visit privacy. Yeah, over here we have a Find Hub, which is now uh, what used to be Find My Device. It just changed the name uh, or Find My Mobile. This feature allows you to find your phone if it's lost or stolen. Uh, at least in theory. So it is, of course, recommended to check if it's enabled. We also have remote lock that you might want to enable. So you can go through that in order to um, to pretty much uh, set up an additional uh, layer of protection. All right, I think that's pretty much it. I believe these are all essentials that you should do on the Poco F7. And now what you have to do is, I don't know, like change wallpaper, download your apps that you are about to use, and, I don't know, customize the home screen, and so on and so forth. So, thanks for watching, leave a like, and subscribe.